The second winning series is a unique sports program that probes into the often controversial world of professional and amateur sports. Sports View Today. Everybody, welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. And I'm Bob Page. Our sponsors in the program today, Al Dietrich Oldsmobile. Uncle Al with his rebate offers on select 1988 Oldsmobile models as well as GMC trucks at the still new dealership on M59 just east of the Pontiac Airport in Waterford. We've got Fred Wetzel and the folks at TCOM Pages with their wide state beeper coverage wherever you're watching this program. Royal Transmissions. And they've got how many, many locations, locations, locations in Metro Detroit? Too numerous to the mention. The good transmission people. As opposed to the bad transmission That is people. correct. We've got uh, sports fans journal issue, issue number, number 18 and wait till you see issue number 19 you'll want to subscribe to this paper dial this number 24 hours a day for more information and also if you're looking for work 3503530 i say that because most people are so lazy out there it's unbelievable if you've got something between the ears besides sawdust i'm like bob page call and we'll talk yeah, exactly to you. because i mean technically i'm looking for work i need a radio job right now i mean i'm not desperate enough yet to go to hey, Sports Fans hey, Journal and sell advertising You make more time. money there than you will but on radio. I know there are people out there who are desperate enough to actually get involved with Ron Cameron I'm not. I'm talking about... So give him a call. 3503530. Exactly. Right. And we also have uh, PASS, the Pro-Am Sports System. Good people. Maxie's Main Street. We have attorney Sam Bernstein. If you've been injured, uh, slip and fall, whatever, and you need a lawyer anywhere in Southeast or Mid-Michigan, you Sam You've been injured mentally. He even has an 800 toll free number. Your ego's been injured, hasn't it? That. Uh, <laughs> my, Ronnie... Working with you, pal, my ego's in terrible shape all the time. Let me tell you. How long have you been here? How long have I allowed you to stay four here? Four years. That's you and right. I have been sitting here. Unbelievable. You got to kiss the ground that you're still uh, and no we job also have, anywhere. Uh, bootleggers, one of my newest sponsors, and uh, they want to. You joining that staff? Their new location on Nine Mile between Woodward and I-75 in Ferndale. Our guest in the program today, Detroit's own Jerome Foster, former Kettering High School star, All Big Ten, All American lineman American, at Ohio yes, State, yes, and now has played the National Football League for several years with the New York Jets on injured reserve this last season. And we'll talk with Jerome about uh, one of the things I want to talk Ask with Jerome if about. Is any related to Dwight? I, I want to talk with Jerome a lot about Woody Hayes because you know Woody actually recruited him to Ohio State. Was that before Minnesota. or after he knocked you on your derriere? That was just after he hit me at the Big Ten press conference in Chicago, <laughs> and I think that was about 1975. And we'll talk about it. Woody was one of those mercurial personalities. So are you. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, some unfinished business from the last program, since we're talking about professional football here. The Lions, I see, have signed 12 free agents. None of them happened to be a guy who is working for you right now, Paul Yokish. And I just wonder what's going on, A, with the Lions, why they won't sign this guy, and B, wh what's happening with Jokic? Is he through in pro football? Well, you see, Jokic suffered a tough groin injury. Right. And, uh, it was and the Michigan career, coaching staff worked him over, too. He should not have played no, his senior year, and Paul's not played. happy about that either, the fact no, that they made him play. Well, they didn't make him play, but they suggested, I think sure. they, they made a yeah. mistake on there. But he's coming back great now, and that's why he was cut last year by Houston and San Francisco, and the Miami Dolphins, another team, have offered him a contract. And uh, we're talking now. They're talking now with him. Now he's going to go to the uh, to the pre camp and just see what he can do. I mean, you know, the, -camp, the Lions have such it. horrendous problems. Not only a tight end, but wide receiver. If Paul Jokic is healthy, you they can't should. tell me this kid can't help the Lions. Help he be lives. Better anything they he got. lives five minutes from the Silverdome in Clarkson. He's there for the taking. And this is one of the many reasons why the Lions have been the worst organization in pro football for years. They have not aggressively pursued free agents. I'm not talking about the draft. I'm not no. talking about trades. Well, Guys, you can trades. Have. I want to Guys, talk you about. I want to criticize them on the trades. They're just not aggressive no. enough, period. That's yeah. why they're losers. Exactly. Um, I see also that one of your favorite players is in the news. The Lions are interested in bringing him back. Did you see this? Billy Sims? No, not <laughs> Billy Sims. David Hill. You didn't see this. You, well, are you so busy so. you don't read the sports section? You don't know what the hell's going on, do you? If, they, if, if they're so hard up to bring back David Hill, 
Who makes you look like, uh, like uh, well, you know what I'm trying to say. David Hill. Jackie LaLanne. Well, you see, David Hill in Los Angeles became one of the finest blocking tight ends in the game. He what, he's 300 pounds wide? Well, he weighs Christ, he's he, like he, this. David is heavy. He's always had a weight heavy. problem. He weighs about 260, 265, and they, they had a running game for him to block for. But in Detroit, I, I don't understand. I mean, what do they think, James Jones and Gary James are the next coming of Eric Dickerson and Billy Sims? And I don't know David why they want to block him. David guy in the world. And he's da- about as quick as you and, are, Bob. And David's getting up there. He's got to be 34, 35 years Least. old now. I'm a little, as much as I like David Hill, and I thought he was a fine tight end. I'm, I'm a little surprised that the That's Lions would, would be concerned about bringing him back. If they were contenders. Back. What did you make of this situation with Terry Andrzak at Notre Dame? He's got a, he's got a red shirt year coming. They didn't bend, didn't bend over at Notre Dame, did they? And, and they do not want him back, and I know Terry's got to be disappointed by that because, it, in effect, it means his football career is over. He's not going to play in the NFL. And Notre Dame says, we just simply do not red shirt kids if they haven't been injured. Um, and, and they looked and into it and they said I, he wasn't injured. I wonder if Terry Andrzak isn't a little bitter, and I wondered if maybe he's not questioning his decision to go to Notre Let's Dame. Let's get him the on the show place. and find out. Get him on the show again, if we can. Um, the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame, we haven't had too much to say about, but as you all know, yeah. there's, a, there's a big controversy right now uh, involving that. Nick Kerboy, who was just on this program a couple months ago, the longtime director, is being accused of rigging the voting, it's putting in amateur golfer, the amateur golfer who was going to the Hall of Fame. Steve Johnson? Glenn Johnson. Glenn Johnson. Steve Johnson, Johnson is, of course, still with the Portland, Portland Trail. Trail. Money's hurt. He's hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's right. But anyway, uh, putting Glenn Johnson, and even though he doesn't have enough votes, and now people are coming forth demanding that Kerbaway resign, and George Puskas re- is a Hall of resigned Fame. his uh, his uh, directorship on the uh, on the uh, uh, on the board in his column in the Free Press. Should Nick Kerbaway quit? And do you have any thoughts, oh sports guru, on what happened here? Not really. I don't even know if if he should quit because of that. You know, Nick if that meant for Nick Kerbaway, there wouldn't be a Michigan sports Hall Absolutely of Fame. Absolutely right. And uh, whether it's underhanded or not, I don't know. I don't know that much about it to, to know, but I, I, I'd like to see Nick Kerboy continue in it. The one thing that I think would resolve the situation, and this has surprised me, is that Glenn Johnson, I, and I don't know Glenn Johnson at all. I'm sure he's a fine man, and I know he was a great He golfer, was your heyday in the 40s. But I, I'm sure that Glenn Johnson could have resolved the situation by doing what he should have done, standing up and saying, look, I can't Didn't he play Michigan this. State football? I did. No. I did not. I did Michigan not State. have enough votes to legitimately get into the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. I know Glenn feels he deserves to be in there anyway, but yeah. the fact of the matter is he didn't get the votes. He should have stood up, and he could have taken a lot of heat off Kerboy by saying, "Look, I, I appreciate the, this, but I, I want to wait until I'm voted." I don't voted think that in. would take the heat off at all. I don't think Nick Kerboy should resign. There wouldn't be a Hall of Fame without the guy. But I do think maybe Nick ought to learn a lesson from this and do things above board, and maybe not be so autocratic in the way he handles the Hall of Fame in the future. Um, and finally, it's only uh, the month of February, but I think it's time to give out our moron of the year award in professional sports you for your predictions no ron no for your predictions no, no. some of my predictions have been pretty good actually one out of maybe but 30 the moron of the year in professional sports now, now wait now this is from a guy who said who called doug williams a dog said he still, couldn't play yes. and then he made a fool out of you in the no, super bowl one great who said isaiah career. thomas isn't a great player the ridiculous comments you made we both the ridiculous careers, comments folks. you made let's if talk I, careers. Continue, I got the guts to say it I he's not a great player continue with what i'm saying this guy carlos monzon the former world middleweight boxing champion is now in chains in jail down in his native Argentina for not only beating his wife, but killing her. Threw his wife off. A, you didn't realize this. I, anyway, I heard anyway. about it. But, but anyway, he threw his wife off a balcony. And when they asked Monzon to comment, this guy actually said, you know, no I comment. don't understand what, what happened because I've always beaten all of my wives. This in the wake of that, of that expose on 60 Minutes Sunday night. And CBS teased it, saying, "What's the only place in the world where you can beat your wife and get away with it?" Boxing. Some of the some, some not boxing, <laughs> only place in the world. Some of the Hispanic countries, the La, the Latino concept of machismo is such that this is expected behavior and tolerated behavior. And I look at these millions of, of, of Hispanic kids all over Central America and South America, and in this country to you a sure? degree, who grow up idolizing jerks like Carlos Monzon. And when they see Monzon say in the wake of the death of his wife, I beat all my wives all stupidity, the time. Stupidity. But what do they think? Well, what, do they, what do they think of this? So now it's okay if you're a macho man and a world championship boxer to beat no, women? No, it's not okay if you beat the, to, to do what it. Are these, ki- these kids are so impressionable. I just, I just cannot believe some of the things I see in sports these days. I cannot believe some of your predictions, so we should go to the guests pretty soon. Do, you know, Jerome we Foster done, you know, we is here on done Sports Week today, and we will and continue. You know, we haven't Jerome done our Foster, countdown with the hockey former players. former Ohio State All-American hockey players, and long-time NFL players, you players want to start right after it? this. What's the problem, lady? Where's your husband? I don't need this. 
You don't. Let Uncle Al's army come through for you. Yes, ma'am. No problem. Coffee? Uncle Al's highly trained army attacks general and major repairs on your private vehicle in a personal way. Tanks? No. Thank you. Uncle Al, crushing the competition and high cost suit with the respect you deserve. Yeah! Al Dietrich, Oldsmobile, GMC truck in Waterford. If you're a sports fan, you should subscribe to this paper, Sports Fans Journal. Our monthly columnists include Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Danny McLean, Pass his own Jim Northup, Dick Vitale, Don Cherry, George Allen, Bob Feller, Eli Zaret, Bill Frieder, Governor Blanchard, and many more. Just $15 a year. Sports Fans Journal is also available at local newsstands and bookstores. For more information, call 350-3530. Sports Fans Journal, a must for all sports fans. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. President, I ran right over as soon as you called. I told you never to say I ran. Excuse me, sir. Well, what's so great about this Maxie's restaurant in Royal Oak? Well, Mr. President. There are many reasons why people come to Maxie's. Great food, superb atmosphere. We have classics on video every Tuesday and Thursday night with Elmar. Every Sunday night, we feature the Maxie Jam with some of the best entertainers this side of the Mississippi. And... This is where you'll find some of the celebrities that you've heard of, like Nick Aramo, my good friend from WOMC Radio, and... Well, what do you mean you don't have prunes? I'm 74, and my car's a 74. We're both running great, because I'm loyal to Royal. My train mission gave me the shakes. I went where I got a break. You bet. I'm loyal to Royal. At Royal, we can stop transmission problems before they start. Come into one of our convenient locations and join all the satisfied customers who say, I'm loyal to Royal. I don't even know what a transmission is, but I trust the guys who do. That's why I'm loyal to Royal. Loyal to Royal and drive yourself happy. We're back on Sports View talking football with the pro football player, the ex of Kettering High School, went to Ohio State where he's All-American and where he's recruited by Woody Hayes, who's claimed to fame was he knocked Bob Page on his rear end. And we're talking about Jerome Foster. No relation to Dwight, I'm sure. No. No. You know who Dwight Foster is? Do you know who Dwight Foster is? No. Isn't that something? Detroit does not know who Dwight Foster is. He's probably not much of a hockey fan. Hockey right. played for the Red Wings right. for now, a few years. Had some good years with the Red Wings. Do you have a question for Jerome? Because everybody knows you're not Injured. much of a football oh, aficionado. You know the ball is oblong, and that's the extent of it. Go ahead. I'll put you a muzzle one of these days. You are in the NFL last year, you never played all year. Let these people know you're still alive and you're still playing. I'm still alive and I'm still playing. <laughs> for who? I'm playing for the New York Jets. Mm -hmm. Now, were you and seriously you injured last year? I had tore a calf muscle. Mm -hmm. I tore it completely in two, so I was out for the first 12 games. Is that a career ending? Could it, could it end a career? No, I'm back 100%. Stronger now than it was before. Because teams stash guys on the injured reserve list frequently in the NFL, don't they? Guy, a, guy, a guy that they like maybe but they can't find room for right now, they'll say he's injured, they'll keep him there all year and just pay his salary. Well, it's hard to do that because you only allow so many guys on the injured reserve. So. And they, they check it pretty closely now, don't they? Yeah, like they before. check it real closely. Mm -hmm. You gonna be happy with the Jets? What do you hope to do this next season? Is there a chance to start now that Joe Klecko's retired? Well, there's an opening, and uh, I don't know what they're gonna do in the draft, but there's an opening that knows now, so I hope I can get in there and do something at that position. There's been some problems with the Jets. You no, know, I don't think anybody would complain. A lot of people wondered about the coach if he's gonna be around, and uh, who is they the say who, Joe, is, who is the coach? Joe Walton. Good. Mm -hmm. And there, a lot of people were screaming last year. Don't remember the games? They were screaming, <laughs> "Joe must go." The wrong Joe went. Klecko <laughs> retired, and Walton's still there, much to the, the fans and, and all that yeah. stuff. So. He's not a very popular person, but I think he's done a pretty good job since he's been there. He's popular with the players now. The fans, you know, fans are, when you're winning, everything's okay. When you're losing, it's not. He'll be around for another couple of years, I think. But Tough. what about the team? The team, we're going to get together. We're going to get together. Why weren't you together last year? Uh, we was okay until the strike. I think the strike kind of... That's what they all say. It's a violin. Team. You know, Jerome, yeah, it, it, it is it amazing, Jerome, how many move. guys we've had on this show talking about, well, if it hadn't been for the strike, mm -hmm. it's, it's like only four or five teams in the NFL went on strike and the rest of them got to play. <laughs> they all went on strike, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, but um, a lot of teams didn't break up be doing a strike, too. Our team had a lot of guys that crossed over and everything, and that brought A lot some. of dissension. Yeah, between the players on the team. Now, Mark Gastineau, of course, was the most prominent guy who, who crossed over and was very outspoken in his pronouncements about the union. Is that part of the divisive atmosphere well, of the Jets? Is there bitterness toward Gastineau? Not really, because Gastineau made his mind up before the strike. He wasn't one of the guys who came out and then decided to go back. He had in his mind that, you know, this is wasn't for him, and we respected him for that. 
Is that right? Mm -hmm. There really wasn't uh, weren't hard feelings toward Gaston. Not uh, not hard feelings. The only only hard feelings came when he started running his mouth. During, yeah, he uh, he likes to do that about quite a the bit. Guys that out on the I don't think that Gaston was the same player he was three or four years ago. No, well, that's hard for me to judge. <laughs> Why not? You're right there. Yeah, but I don't want to make that judgment. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's no comment was says it, all. Right. Was it, <laughs> yeah. Was it, was it difficult to, to play in New York? Is it difficult to be in New York with the media spotlight and uh, the attendant pressures? Not really. I'm not one of the guys in the media spotlight that much, so it wasn't that hard for me. Um, it is a, you know, the media is around a lot. I mean, the other teams I've been with, you know, you see some guys in every now and then, but they have, we have a special hour we have to spend with them every day and uh, before and after practice. So mm -hmm. it's, they pay more attention to the media there than any team I've been with. Let's go back to your days at Kettering where you were a star player in this town and uh, then you went to Ohio State. Did, mm -hmm. uh, did, was that Woody's last year when he recruited you? Yeah, that was the last year when he made the mistake down at the Gator Bowl. Were you, now, were you on that team or, or had you Yes, just, I was on so that you, team. So you were there mm -hmm. when that happened then? How did you react to that? How did the team react to it? Uh, actually, I was one of the guys that didn't know what happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was um, at the other end of the uh, other end of the field, and all we know is like a team fight broke out, and we didn't know what started it. And I didn't find out the next day that he hit somebody. Well, the next day, <laughs> and what next about the dressing day. room after? The, the dressing room afterwards, it was quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, when he came in, he was ticked, and um, <laughs> nobody really? said nothing to. No, nobody on the bus ride back. Nobody said nothing back to the hotel. So you picked up the paper the next day and said, hey, <laughs> no, what's we, this? Actually, I saw it on TV the next day. Is that right? And <laughs> you know how you get up in the morning, you turn the TV on, and it, it was the first thing, you know, it was all over everywhere. Did you believe it? Yeah, they had it right there. Yeah, well, they filled the replay. But I mean, you yes, had, had, had head coach uh, like Woody Hayes punching out an opposing well, player. Well, punched out you, didn't he? I'm not an opposing <laughs> player. I'm a member of the hated media. Uh, well, I, I've seen it happen before. The only thing that I hate about his image is that everybody just look at him as a guy who punches players, punches people. Who get well, why don't you play. tell us about Woody Hayes the person? Well, Woody Hayes the person was a real nice gentleman. <laughs> he was. Tell Bob Page that. <laughs> Woody could be charming. Now, how do you think he could come to mm -hmm. Detroit and get a player like this to go to Ohio State? Woody could be charming, and Woody Hayes, you will never hear any of his former players say a negative word about Woody Hayes. No, I didn't like Woody, but it doesn't matter what I think. I'm a member of the media. Mm -hmm. His players loved him. Yeah, we did. And um, because he, he loved his players, mm -hmm. and he treated them like that. You've seen it. He acted. I mean, we had things like study table. You'll see him there all the time. And he's always helping guys out any way he can. As opposed to the guy who came in and took Woody Hayes' place, Earl Bruce. You did not like him, did you? Uh, well, we didn't get along that well. But uh, it's just because I guess I was one of the guys spoiled by Woody, mm -hmm. about the attention he gave his players. And was he more disciplined than Hayes? He was more business-like than Hayes. It was more like a business to him than... Mm -hmm. Not very friendly, in other words, kind of cold and... Yeah, well, he was so-so, so, you know. Mm -hmm. He's he's friendly, too, because we hear his players. you got to be, you know, keep us up in a certain way. Um, the only thing about it, you know, everything was like business. You know, yeah. he's, mm -hmm. he kind of started losing the fun of the game. All right, just to close this segment, then, knowing what you know now, how Woody left after your freshman year, Earl Bruce came in, and what happened, would you have gone to Michigan? Or where would you have gone if not Ohio State? Do you regret it? Well, my choices was USC. I was one of the guys I took off with my six visits. I went west. <laughs> <laughs> I never been no farther than Michigan, so I took off to all the sunny spots I can get mm -hmm. to. And uh, I loved you, loved my visit to USC and Oklahoma. So my four choices was Ohio, Michigan, USC, and Oklahoma. And if you had to do it all over again? Uh, it would still be between those, I guess. Well, if I know what I My know. Drew, make the decision. Say, know what you know. what now. I know from uh, what's going to happen at Ohio State, well, I would have dropped Ohio State out of it. What would you have been your second choice was the question. Michigan, USC, Oklahoma. <laughs> we won't make a choice <laughs> on those do. three. <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue with Jerome Foster right after this. <laughs> Thank you.